Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. I missed you so much. I missed you biblically. I missed you. Let's just get down to it. I've been a little bit busy. I just launched my company, which I'm super excited about. And thank you guys so much for the support. Even if you didn't buy and you shared the initial tweet, that helps so much. Um, that's freaking amazing. So thank you so much. Like literally when you retweet, it's something you can do for free. It's something that could really help out small businesses like mine. So thank you so much for that. I'm getting ready for the holiday rush. So I'll, you know, all that Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday business. And uh, because of that, I have a lot of stuff to do. I have boxes to make. I want to up the opening experience. Like I know that's something that you should definitely think about. And <laughs> a lot of people are like, you're a small business. Don't worry about that yet. You literally just started. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I want an opening experience. So that's what we're doing today. We're just building some boxes. And I'm going to talk to you about all the steamy romances I've been reading because I like a good feel good ending. I like a feel good middle. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the steamy romances I read this week. Let's talk about sex. So I actually started the scripting for this video a while ago. So anyway, I have a list of books here. It's incomplete because like sometimes I don't write down my sweat. Anyway, let's go ahead and just read off all of the books so I can talk about my favorites. The first one I read was Office Hours, followed by the entire Just For Him bind up series. Um, no, it's just for him. And then it was a bind up. And then it was just all the books. It wasn't about, well, it kind of was. Anyway, Guarding Temptation, Princess Trap, Mating the Huntress, Rafe or Raph, uh, Haven, the Family, books one and two. It's not about incest. Oh my god, it's like an Italian mafia story. Untouchable, Queen Move, Pink Slip, Rugged, and Sanctuary. But I also read the entire The Ruthless Russians, the complete collection. I read another book too. I'll have it on the screen. You're probably asking yourself, Meeks, why you been so horny? I haven't. Um, but also, I am writing a book. Uh, hopefully, I'm writing multiple books. And uh, I would like to put sex in those books. So in order to write a good sex scene, you need to know what sells as a sex scene and how to write a good sex scene. You got to read what's on the market. You got to read what's selling. You got to read what other people are reading. Um, so you know what you like as a writer and you also know what you like as a reader. Because if you write something that you just absolutely hate reading back, ooh, it's bad. So throughout this process, I really did learn like what I liked as a reader and what I needed to learn as a writer. It also helps that I've had these experiences. So ultimately, from what I've read, will help me when it does come time for me to write these scenes. I wanna, since I literally just read the Ruthless Russian series, I wanna go ahead and recommend it because it's four, it's four books and they're really not that long. But they are all very interesting. But for the most part, they follow the same kind of trope, like ruthless Russian is in need of comforting by American woman. And what the hell is that accent? These uh, kind of ruthless, this ruthless family of Russians uh, learning uh, as they step away from being a mafia sort of thing, from a gangland sort of situation, that they find comfort and love and family. Um, and it's not about the same woman, obviously. It's about four different Russians, all from the same family and four different women. And it's pretty interesting. I really, I really, really liked it. There were some questionable scenes uh, in this book. And I don't mean questionable because of any like content warnings. It's questionable because some of the terminology, we'll get into this. We'll get into this because there are some terms that people use in their sex scenes that I'm just like, girl, what? Like just say pussy, just say pussy, just say cock. We don't need any of, of these fancy terms. And one of them is wet slit. Ugh, I don't like that one. I don't like it. Let's first talk about my faves and like why I love them. So Office Hours by Katrina Jackson. Yes, I love that one. So it's a story about this like really shy, really dutiful professor and she's trying to get tenure and she's just living her life. But she's like, I am unfulfilled and I want to be filled the fuck up by that guy and it's her colleague yeah so she's like really stressed out and she's finding these moments of joy in spending time with uh her love interest the other professor uh, eventually things get hot and steamy and he's finding comfort in her and she's finding comfort in him and i think that i really love this story because it's like really relatable she's shy she's just wants to get her work done she's trying to make a better life for herself in the long run and it's just really sweet and it's relatable and they're finding just these small joyous moments there's nothing big stakes going on uh you know other than someone might get fired and you lose all that work you did but like 
there's no like no one's gonna die you know no one's gonna fall down a mystical pit and never be seen again so I really liked it it was just sweet this book really was just dealing with the like monotony of life and upper management bullshit and I really like that I really like that that's we can all relate to that oh my god Rafe Rafe slayed me. Rafe was such a surprise. I read this early on in my my romance journey. It killed me entirely because imagine you're just a stressed out doctor with kids. I don't know what's going on my sleeve. And you just and you come home one day and your original nanny has just walked out and left a note. So you have your two twins sitting in the living room with no ad adult supervision. And you're just like, I paid this person to watch my children. And so she's like panicking. She's like, I need a nanny. But her friend is like, I got you. She gives her the number to this manny and it's Rafe. And he's just this big, burly, Irish man that has moved there. Uh, he's finally gotten off uh, a job with an Australian family. And they're or not Australian. They were going to move to Australia. So he's out of work. And he's like, maybe I won't be a nanny anymore. But then he gets the call and he interviews with this woman. And he's like, damn, she's hot. I'm trying to stick my dick in it. But also her kids are great. But also, this is complicated because I want to stick my dick in it. And it was very nice, but it's very sweet because he's just so good with the kids. And then he's so good with her. And just imagine coming home and this man has dinner made for you and the dishes are washed. And then he gives you a foot massage. That's my kink. That is my kink right there. So when people talk about like fantasy fulfillment in books, this was it for me. So it wasn't even the sex in the book. It was, which was great by the way it was really cool uh cool that's not how you want to describe sex it was really steamy but um also it was really just the, the fact that Rafe was so attentive that's I'm a Leo okay so a man paying all that attention to me let's go I think that was the hot part for me and not the sex scenes so maybe I read it wrong but I still got the effect baby so that's cool. I really liked Rafe. The other thing that I really liked about Rafe was that it was an amazing commentary on how you can keep things sexy and still talk about consent. There were so many blunt statements of intent, of consent, of intention, you know, like it's it can be so easy. This book was one of those books that I feel like everybody needs to read because Rafe was so upfront with his needs and I'm forgetting the main character's name but she was so upfront with her needs as well and they found easy common ground because there was no room for them to be like miscommunicating all over the place it was so beautiful I need more of that no more miscommunication tropes it's out it's dead it's cancelled it's over we are done with it forever um the third book that really made me super happy to read was Sanctuary. Sanctuary I liked for a lot of the same reasons as Rafe. It's because of the blunt statements of con uh, content, consent and intent and it involves a retired dominatrix. There's a murder plot like right in the first 10 pages. And this was kind of an intense one. There's autism rev. I mean it's oh my god. These books really hit me and it wasn't even the sex that's what I'm finding out it's not even the about the the penis to vagina vagina <laughs> I'm a child it's not even about the the penetrative sex it's not even about like the fondling it's not even about the foreplay it's about the communication and I think what I'm finding is that I find that to be the hottest part of it because in real life a lot of people don't understand how hot that can be but in books they're teaching the people. I love education. I get off to learning. That's not what I wanted to say. I again, why do you subscribe? Before I even continue, let me just tell you what the book is about. So basically, this woman is high powered in New York, uh, high powered lawyer, and she takes on a case as lawyers do. And it goes wrong, as it does sometimes. And the client is pissed the fuck off. So he sends una estacion. And it fails, luckily. And she ends up like stabbing him with a stiletto weapons we love to see it so her lawyer friend who's actually trying to get with her is like i'll save you and he sends her to his brother's farm um and that's a plot point later that i won't spoil because i actually think it's pretty neat but oh no his brother is hot and she knows and his brother is like that woman's hot she's big she got titties she got ass i like what i'm seeing but also he's very grumpy i love the grumpy trope and so they uh, like hide her out on their farm and she's pretending to be his girlfriend and he's like 
really being accommodating for someone who's just thrust into this. Um, but over the course of the story, you know, obviously they make the whoopies and uh he's very kind in the end and he's just like a sweetheart and this is where the autism rep comes in because he, he like uh explains it to her and she's like i don't give a fuck and a lot actually happens in that book where uh like her friend comes back and he's not exactly the nice guy that she thinks he is and he's still like but i did all this for you and the parents get involved and all the people on the farm that are working there honestly it made me really want to just go to like an apple farm i'm going to tell you straight up i was like i'm trying to find love at the apple farm i thought boxes would go faster you can see i've done like two over the course of this video oh my god i can't talk and make boxes so i had to take a momentary pause um because i had to run some errands and i totally forgot that i had like a billion candles to pour so um but we're back i'm taking a little break to finish this video out and uh finish making some more boxes i'm so excited about these boxes like really about boxes and in any case um i was really excited to do this because it taught me what i liked oh no it taught me what i liked about romance and it taught me that like you can have porn without a plot but i think i prefer the plot with the porn you know what i mean like i need to know why the plumber has come to lay pipe i need to know what cables were broken and why we need a repairman you know, I need, I, I need to know why the pizza man has brought me extra sausage today. Like, what did I do to deserve it? Have I been a good girl? So like, yeah, I like the poly representation and the pink slip, but it was still like basically porn without a plot. There was a lot of like pining and there are a couple flashbacks to like all three of the meeting for the first time, including a, a like flashback to the main couple uh, meeting for the first time. and. There's a lot about that, but like, what was the point? Um, the action was cool, but there wasn't enough of it for me to be like, yeah, this is a dope romance action, action romance. Um, there just wasn't enough. Like there were all these little threads that could have been tugged on. And obviously romance, the main point is the romance. So I can't even truly complain about that. Like, yeah, that's just what romance is. It's, there's all this other stuff. There's a world outside of these two people or three people or four people trying to get together but you never will know about it because the whole point of the story is the romance. I also super relate to the main uh, woman character in the first the first book of the family series, that Italian mafia series that I told you was not at all uh, about incest. Please keep that in mind, it's just called The Family. Um, yeah, so she goes to Italy with her man-child boyfriend. And if you guys have never dated a man child, it's obnoxious and you get really fed up with it when you're traveling. Um, I've dated a man child and I've traveled with that man child and it was awful. So she goes to Italy and she has this amazing experience in the back of a pizzeria with this old Italian man. I don't say old, like, you know, middle, middle age Italian man. But I'm like, I couldn't get into it because all she's doing is cheating. I could not get into it. 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 I'm not about the cheating plot line. Was was it well written? Yes. Was the sex scene steamy? Yes, it was. But not for me because of cheating. And then there's Queen Move, which I thought was such a cute second chance at romance story um, of two people who have lived lives and come back together um, in their hometown. And it was such a good opening. It was so, it was good. It was great. I fantastic. But then at the end we had baby mama drama and all sorts of things. I don't know. I just am not into baby mama drama. It's just not my thing. It never will be my thing. Uh, maybe if I have some baby mama drama, that will be a thing. Uh, but I tend to avoid that at all costs. So not me. Never will be me. Hopefully, knock on wood. This is kind of wood, this cardboard. Oh. Um, so yeah, this was a fun little like research experiment for me. I also discovered some new things I liked in romance and things that I didn't like in romance. Um, I definitely will have a list of all the books down below because I know I didn't say any of the authors. So I'm gonna have the books, the authors, um, what I would recommend and what didn't do it for me down in the description box below. So feel free to check that out if you're interested in taking this weird romp through romance with me. Um, yeah. So that's been another episode and I'm gonna get back into the swing of things guys. If I can do more videos like this where I'm doing work and talking about books, super sweet for me um, because I just, I don't know when I'm gonna find all that dedicated time to film in my normal setup because my normal setup has become my candle packing station. Um, we're redoing the entire apartment just to accommodate my new business and 
I'm very thankful for that, but also it's just, you know, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Let's not pussyfoot around it. See how easy it was to just say pussy? Hmm? All right, until next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching this chaotic, uh, book talk if you will while i do a little bit of work if you're interested in some good smelling shit okay it's not shit but it's candles um room sprays the holiday collection is rolling out very very soon so feel free to check down the description i will have the link to my shop website and shop instagram and shop twitter thank you guys so much it's so great to be back and be talking to you guys again i'll see you next time bye